It says in Psalm 102, verse 12 and verse 13 of the NIV, those of you that are here, say amen. amen. Those that are watching online, get the word of God before your eyes. The Bible says don't let it depart from it. The Bible says hide the word of God in your heart. You got to know the word of God. Everything you need is in the word of God. I said everything you need is in the word of God. Say amen, somebody. Psalm 102. Verse 12 and verse 13. I'm reading from the NIV today. But you, O Lord, sit enthroned forever. You will arise and have compassion on Zion. For it is time to show favor to her. For the appointed time has come. Tell somebody the appointed time has come. Lift your hands. I declare that this month you shall have power with God and you will experience favor with man. Power with God. Everybody say power with God and favor with man. You may be seated. When it comes to experience the favor of God, according to the scripture, not your opinion. I really don't care about your opinion. But concerning the scripture, when it comes to the favor of God, that God has an appointed time. Each and every one of us that are saved. Can I see your hand if you're a believer today? You're saved. Let me see your hand. Every one of you have the favor of God. But many of you need to realize that God wants his favor to increase in your life. Say that with me. Favor is going to increase in my life. How many of you would like to see favor increase in your life? I'm going to be talking about it tomorrow night on Empower Life. How to experience or receive an increase of the favor of God in your life. People say to me all the time, Pastor, you got the favor of God. You should be walking and experiencing the favor of God. You are a child of God. Can you say amen? amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Today I want to talk to you. I'm going to preach it today and next week, two weeks. I want to preach this subject, my favorite things. Say that with me, my favorite things. What is your favorite thing? What is your greatest interest? What is your greatest desire? My favorite thing is to see people saved. My favorite thing is to see loved ones come to the saving knowledge of God's Son. My favorite thing is to see people that are bound in chains instantaneously delivered in the presence and the anointing of God and never again the same. What is your favorite thing? What is the thing that drives you through the day, carries you through times of difficulty, and causes you to sleep like a baby through the night? What is your favorite thing? I want to talk to you today about the favor of God or my favorite thing. Ever tell somebody, my favorite things. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says, the psalmist said, but you shall sit in throne forever. You will arise and have compassion on Zion for the time to show favor to her. The appointed time has come. Favor is mentioned in the Bible 70 times. Say that with me. 70 times. You study your Bible, you'll find this. You'll discover if you study your word, you'll find out everyone or anyone that did anything great for God experienced his favor in their life. Somebody shout hallelujah. I want you to lift your hands and, say, and declare. Declare. Say, I'm not depressed. I'm blessed. I'm highly favored of the living God. Now shout if you actually believe what you've just declared. Lift your hands again and say, Lord, I need you to do me a favor. Say, I need you to do me a favor. Heal my family. Deliver my children. Come on, somebody. I need a favor in my family, in my finances, in my children's lives. I need a favor in my relationships. I need a favor in my health. I need a favor. Say, I need a favor in my mind. I need a favor in my family. I need a favor in my finances. Raise your hand. Say, God, I'm asking you by faith. Do me a favor. Now shout if you believe God's going to grant you your request. In Genesis chapter number 39, are you ready for the ride today? Are you ready? In Genesis chapter number 39, it says this. In verse 21 of the New Living Translation. But the Lord was with Joseph. Say that with me. The Lord was with Joseph in the prison. 
the Lord showed him favor. In the prison, the God favored him. And the Bible says, and showed him his faithful love. In a prison, in a dark place, in a time of isolation, the Lord favored Joseph. You study the life of Joseph, you will discover that the Lord was with Joseph through every season of his life. How many of you are glad that God does not abandon you in difficult seasons of your life? I got my hands up today and my foot too. Shout amen. We've got to understand that God is with us in times of despair. God is with us in times that seem hopeless. God is with us in times of great opposition and difficulty. But the Bible tells us that God will never leave us. Oh my God, hallelujah. Oh my Lord, hallelujah. He'll never leave us, amen. He'll never forsake you. But he's with you always until the end of the earth. Can somebody shout praise the Lord? The Bible says the Lord was with Joseph. Tell somebody God is still with you. You may not feel him. You may not see him, but God is there. There's times in all of our lives that we feel like we're all alone. Can I get somebody that is a living witness that could say, I know what you're talking about. Have you ever been there that it seems like you were all alone? You can feel alone, but you're not alone. I know what it is to feel alone. I know what it is to lose a loved one on this brief life earthly journey. But just because we feel alone does not mean we are alone. There is a man by the name of Jesus. He sticketh closer than a brother. Can somebody shout? hallelujah lift both your hands and shout hallelujah and the bible says through joseph's journey before joseph experienced great promotion the bible says in genesis 39 21 the lord was with joseph tell somebody the lord was with joseph in the prison and showed him his amazing faithful love and the lord made joseph i like the new living translation and the lord made joseph a favorite with the person in the prison, the man that was in charge, the warden. Everybody say, Joseph became a favorite with the prison warden. Tell your neighbor, I'm one of God's favorites. Oh, hallelujah. And if you believe that, you should be smiling. You should be celebrating. You should be clapping your hands. If you believe that you are in God's inner circle, can somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. Somebody shout praise the Lord. It does doesn't matter if you like me, God loves me. It doesn't matter if you're for me, God's for me. And if God is for me, there's no devil in hell that can stop me. Can somebody shout praise the Lord today? I came to preach. If you're ready, say amen. Wave your hand if you want a word from God. Tell somebody my favorite things. Oh, hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I'm one of God's favorites. Listen to me today. You're not looking at a lucky man. You're looking at a man that is blessed and highly favored. I'm getting ready to preach with a shirt on Thursday. I'm not lucky. I'm favored. I'm blessed and I'm highly favored of the living God. My God, the doctor comes in the room. You've just gone through an automotive or an accident. You've experienced some type of a physical attack and the doctor says if you were somebody else oh my God that's where you got it all wrong doctor I'm not just anybody else I'm a child of the living God I'm favored I'm blessed when I come in and I'm blessed when I walk out everywhere I go I am surrounded by the blessing and the favor of almighty God what's the matter with some of you your shout is broke open your mouth and shout hallelujah I'm in God's inner circle Tell somebody I'm blessed and I'm highly favored. I'm not lucky. Tell somebody you're not lucky you're alive. You're blessed to be alive. So why don't you stand up and show God you at least have an ounce of gratitude and give him some praise this morning. In Psalm 5 and 12, it says in the fifth Psalm, the 12th verse, surely, everybody say surely. Everybody say surely. The Lord blesses the righteous. Everybody say, the Lord blesses the righteous. He says, not only does the Lord bless the righteous, but he surrounds them, oh my God, with favor as with a shield. Somebody shout, I'm surrounded by God's favor. Tell somebody, God's got me surrounded. Tell somebody, I'm surrounded. I'm not surrounded by trouble. 
I'm not surrounded by death and disease. I'm not surrounded by poverty. I'm not surrounded by lack. I'm not surrounded by insufficiency. I'm not surrounded by depression, but I'm surrounded by the favor of God. Everybody shout, I'm surrounded. Oh my God, tell somebody, tell somebody you're surrounded. You're not surrounded by death and disease. You're not surrounded by destruction and failure, but you are surrounded by favor. Everybody shout, I'm surrounded by favor, not by failure. Oh my God, somebody shout hallelujah. Raise your hands and say, I'm surrounded by favor. I'm not surrounded by failure. Now shout somebody in the house of the living God. I said, shout somebody. It's good to shout in the house of God. Well, somebody's visiting today and they don't do this in your church just because your church is void of the supernatural and the power and the signs and wonders of God. But in this church, God prevails. In this church, the Spirit of God can move. In this church, the gifts of the Spirit are in full operation. Somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. Tell somebody, I'm surrounded by favor. I'm surrounded by favor. Oh, hallelujah. I'm favored on Monday. I'm favored on Tuesday. I'm favored on Wednesday. I'm favored on Thursday. Every day of the week I am surrounded by the favor of God. When I wake up in the morning I'm favored. When I go to work I'm favored. When I come home at night I'm favored. See some of you say it but you don't believe it. But if you believe it leap out of your seat and shout I know who I am. Surely the Lord will bless the righteous with his favor. He surrounds them with favor as with a shield. Tell somebody you're surrounded by favor. The Lord will bless the righteous. Now the word righteous there is a very interesting word. The righteous word there does not mean flawless. Otherwise none of us would qualify. Say amen. It means to be clothed in the righteousness of God. There, thereby it makes us acceptable according to the scripture before God, 2 Corinthians 5.21 in qualifying us for his favor. God is not looking for perfection. God is looking for people, amen, that are willing to change. In Psalm 35, it says that the anger of the Lord, say the anger of the Lord, is only, thank God, it's only for a moment. But his favor is for a lifetime. Say that with me. His favor is for a lifetime. Everybody shout my favorite things. See the problem with many people today is they're caught up with the with, with they're caught up with what they see. They're caught up with the natural. They're caught in the carnal realm. They're bound by materialism. But let me tell you something today. If favor is centered on things, your favor is fake. You need to understand something today. There's a lot of people that say, well, I'm favored because I drive a new car. I'm favored. You could drive a new car and spend eternity in a devil's hell. Let me tell you something. If your favor is only centered on materialism and things, your favor favor is fake and it is not God ordained. Let me say that again. But let me tell you something. When you've got the favor of God, you are bearing fruit. Can somebody shout aloud hallelujah. There's nothing wrong with nice things. Some of you, the reason why you don't have nice things is because you have a lust for those things. But if you seek the kingdom of God first and you put God first, everything else that you desire would fall into your lap. Can somebody raise your hands and shout that's the word say tell somebody say I'm sorry that's the word oh somebody shout hallelujah let me tell you something about materialism let me tell you something about things things have a very short self shelf life things have a very short shelf life you buy it then you complain about the payment 30 days later just like a tree oh my god I don't like fake trees on Christmas Christmas, we decorate with some fake things, but I don't like fake trees because if you fake trees look good, but they don't bear fruit. Are you listening to me? If you are ready to uh, believe that this is going to be the greatest season of fruitfulness in your life, raise your hands and shout aloud, hallelujah. If some of you would get more concerned about the kingdom and about the supernatural, you would live a fulfilled life because every time you buy something you have to keep that cycle going because it will not bring true joy and contentment into your life but there's one that died on the cross and shed his blood that you might have life and have it more abundantly if you accept Christ into your heart you will live a fulfilled life
Tell somebody my favorite things. The Bible says that the favor of God is for a lifetime. Say that with me. Favor is for a lifetime. Tell somebody I've got favor. In ever, tell somebody I've got favor in every season of my life. In every season of my life, I'm living in the favor of God. Everybody shout hallelujah. No matter what you're going through, you're favored of God. If you are a believer, shout amen somebody. Ah, my God, I've got favor in every season of my life. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says weeping indoors for the night. But joy comes in the morning. Can somebody shout aloud hallelujah. The favor of God made it possible for those in the Bible to accomplish supernatural things. Only the favor of God can cause you to do something that is incredible. Something, amen, that is impossible in the natural. See, the favor of God will do for you what you can never do for yourself. Can somebody shout amen? In Esther chapter 5 and 2, God called a teenage girl by the name of Esther to save the Jewish people. Say amen. So the Bible says that she stepped out in faith. She approached the king uninvited even though it violated protocol to obtain favor in his sight. Tell somebody, I got favor in God's sight. Without the favor of God, Ruth, a Gentile, wouldn't have been accepted by the Jews. But because God had a plan for her life, she ended up marrying Boaz, a man of great wealth. Read this in Ruth chapter 2 and verse 1. And from that union between Ruth and Boaz, we see that David, amen, was the descendant as king. And ultimately, our blessed Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, was blessed, came through that lineage because the lineage was blessed by the favor of God. Tell somebody, what favor? This is going to be your testimony. I want to agree with somebody. Can I find 21 people in the building today that will agree with me that this will be your December that you'll never forget? This will be a December. I want 21 of you to wave at me. I just want to preach to you 21. Somebody shout hallelujah. Tell somebody, tell somebody, I've got favor in the sight of God. I got power with God and I'm about to experience favor with man somebody shout aloud hallelujah the Bible says that a good man Proverbs chapter 12 that a good man everybody say a good man will obtain favor from the Lord everybody say a good man everybody shout ladies everybody say ladies to all the men say ladies that's for you too you shall obtain favor from the Lord listen to me one moment of God's favor can do more than a lifetime of your toil striving and your labor somebody shout hallelujah I want to know how many of you will believe with me today for greater favor shout somebody right now shout if you believe for greater favor jump up out of your seat and shout I'm ready to experience greater favor in my life from this day I want you to walk out of this church I'm serious when you walk out those doors tomorrow morning too when you walk out of your house I want you to start looking for the favor of God in new ways shout hallelujah clap your hands and say amen Paul said in Ephesians chapter number 2 Paul said to the church at Ephesus in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 7 he said in the ages to come say that with me in the ages to come this is in your Bible. In the ages to come, we would see the immeasurable. Everybody say immeasurable. Everybody say unlimited. Everybody say bigger, better, greater. The immeasurable, the unlimited, surpassing greatness of God's favor. Let me say that again. The immeasurable, unlimited, surpassing greatness of God's favor. Everybody say, in the ages to come. What is amazing here is Paul wrote this passage, this passage ages ago. And we, I believe, are living in the ages to come that Paul was talking about in Ephesians chapter number 2 and verse 7. Everybody say, in the ages to come. Everybody shout, now. We can experience my God, everybody say, we can experience the immeasurable, unlimited, surpassing greatness of God's favor. Somebody shout right now. 
everybody shout right now the word unprecedented I looked it up the word unprecedented means unmatched unparalleled for the first time in other words you may have seen God's favor in the past but God said get ready you haven't seen anything yet what God has for you in the present and as we move together by faith into the future it will not compare to anything you've ever experienced in the past somebody shout aloud hallelujah everybody shout I'm ready for it I'm ready for unusual, unstoppable, ridiculous, amazing, unprecedented. Shout unprecedented favor in my home, in my marriage, in the lives of all my children, on my job. Unprecedented favor. Everybody shout, this is my favorite thing. Because when you've got favor, you've got everything. Some of you are praying for more money. You don't have a money problem. You've got a favor problem. Somebody shout a hallelujah. And the way you receive favor is the way you receive everything else in the kingdom. You receive it by faith. Shout hallelujah somebody. We receive it by faith. We live by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. Shout hallelujah somebody. Get out of your seat. Go find somebody. Move out of your row and tell somebody, I'm ready for unprecedented favor. It's going to be a December to remember. Speak life. Declare favor over somebody. Speak those things that are not as though they already exist. Faith calling those things. That be not as though they already were. Shout hallelujah somebody. God is looking for somebody on Long Island that is ready for unprecedented favor. Shout hallelujah somebody. God is looking for somebody that we believe for greater works than these shall ye do. Because I go to my Father, greater power, greater miracles, greater influence, greater anointing, greater victory, greater favor shout hallelujah the force of favor will take you where you can never go on your own the force of God's favor will take you where you can never go on your own say that with me the force of God's favor can take me where I can never go on my own. So I said, well, pastor, I've been through so much. Just because you've been through hell does not mean that's God's will. The Bible says there's a thief. Do you know who that is? Everybody shout, the devil. The Bible says he comes to do three things. To steal. To kill. And to destroy. Everybody say steal, steal. Kill, kill, destroy. Anything that kills something prematurely, anything that robs from you, anything that destroys is of the devil. Stop saying it's God. God did not kill your loved one. There is a devil that comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. That's why James breaks it down. He says, every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father above, the Father of lights. In him there is no variableness. There's no shadow or casting. God's not double-minded. God's not bipolar like your husband. God's not depressed. I serve a happy God. He gives us joy unspeakable and full of glory. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Some of you, my God, you would confuse the devil and give the devil a nervous breakdown if you would just simply smile. 
Come on, somebody smile. In spite of the hell you're going through, you can still smile. Shout somebody right now. Put a smile on your face. Go around the room. Come on, come on, come on. I'm tired of looking your, looking at your frown on your face. I'm tired of you walking through these double doors with your chin on your chest. It's time for you to walk into this sanctuary with your head held high. Put your shoulders back. Hold your head up high. You're a child of the Most High God. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm not lucky. I'm blessed. I'm blessed every day of my life. I'm surrounded by the blessing of God. And if you would stop talking about what you're going through and start talking about where you're headed to, you would see everything change. you might have life and that you might have life more abundantly somebody shout abundant life how many of you glad for this abundant life pastor you don't know the hell I'm going through there's something wrong if you're always going through hell something wrong with you go see a doctor go pay $180 for a psychiatrist because if you're constantly going through hell there's something wrong the Bible says there's a season for everything. We all go through season of turmoil, testing, times of frustration. Amen. Say amen. amen. But you should not stay there. That's why the psalmist said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. Why? Because God is with me. Everybody shout, God is with me. The devil lied to some of you and said because of your failures and your mistake, God has left you. Let me tell you something. Amazing grace. Thank God for his mercy. Thank God for his grace. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm not surrounded by destruction. I'm not surrounded by death. I'm not surrounded by poverty and lack. I'm not surrounded by insecurity. I'm not paralyzed by fear. I'm not surrounded by failure. I got angels assigned to me. Goodness and mercy they shall follow me all the days of my life somebody shout hallelujah everybody shout goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life some of you need to change your testimony and learn to align your confession with the 20 hours a week of the Bible that you read you need to declare favor you need to breathe favor you need to speak favor. Somebody shout hallelujah. Say my favorite things. The Bible says our words have creative power. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Where is that in your Bible? Proverbs 18, 21. Romans the 10th chapter talks about the power of words. But the word of God, the gospel, the word of God is even in our heart and in our mouth, the word of faith that we proclaim. The tip of your tongue is either your future or your funeral. God does not determine that you do. God will not discipline you to talk right. You've got to discipline yourself to talk right. Somebody shout hallelujah. I may have pain in my body, but I'm declaring by his stripes, I am healed. I don't come to church and sit in here and hear an hour of faith and believe with my pastor for miracles in the month of December. And then after church, I'm talking about how much pain I'm going through. It's time to grow up. It's time to speak the word of faith. It's time to speak life. It's time to declare I'm blessed. And I'm too blessed to be stressed. And I'm too anointed to live in disappointment. Tell somebody, declare favor. Every day you should expect favor. Because it's your birthright. Shout, it's my birthright. To live in the favor of God. How does favor come? By faith. Favor comes by faith in God. Say amen. What is the favor of God? It's God doing for you. What you cannot do for yourself. It's God doing for you what you cannot do for yourself. Why do you think people are jumping off buildings? Jumping off bridges? Putting guns in their mouth? 
they have no hope. But we are not like those, the Bible says, that have no hope beyond the grave. This is just preparation for eternity. This is the dressing room for eternal life. Every one of us that are saved, can I see your hand? I got an announcement to make, a declaration. You're going to live forever somewhere. Those that are saved, you're going to live forever in eternity. Those that are not sure, you better make sure that you're ready. Because the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die. And after that, the judgment. Favor is God doing for you what you cannot do for yourself. Favor opens doors of opportunity. Favor turns opposition into support. It can help you land a new promotion, make that list, or seal that deal. The Bible says in Luke chapter number 2 and verse 52 that Jesus, our example, our Savior, he increased in wisdom, stature, and favor with God and with man. Lift your hands and declare, I will experience God's power in the month of December. And I will experience favor with man. Now shout if you have that kind of faith. Just as you grow in wisdom, how many of you saved 10 years or more? Can I see your hand? Just as you grow in wisdom, you also grow in stature. The Bible says Jesus did not just grow in wisdom or in stature, but he grew in favor. Say he grew in favor. How many of you want to grow in favor with God and man? It's possible to grow in the favor of God. But remember, you experience and receive favor by faith. Say amen. The Bible says without faith you can't please God. But those that come to God believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that will always diligently seek him. Say amen. amen. You've been saved a long time. Favor should be increasing in your life. Wisdom should be increasing in your life. The Bible says we perish for a lack of knowledge. Say that with me. We perish for a lack of knowledge. Jesus increased in wisdom, stature, and with favor, and with God and man. You should be increasing every year, in every season, in the favor of God. you got to declare favor. Stop declaring failure. Stop declaring disease. Stop declaring the things that you've been through. Start declaring favor over your life. Somebody shout, favor has power. Favor will bring promotion. Favor produces increase. Somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. hallelujah. The Bible says that Abraham, God spoke to him. He says, I will give you an abundance of favor. I will bless you. In blessing, I'll bless you. And in multiplying, I'll multiply you. Every year, every month that you're saved in your journey with God, you should be growing in the favor of God. You should be growing in understanding. You should be growing in your faith. You should be growing in love towards your brothers and sisters. Somebody shout amen. You've got to declare favor. I love Job 22. Job 22, 28 is one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. It says in Job 22, 28, it says, decree a thing and it shall be established for you. And after you decree it, you speak it, you confess it, then the light of God's favor shall shine upon your ways. In other words, you are standing under the spotlight of God's favor. Somebody shout hallelujah. Say that with me. I'm standing under the spotlight of God's favor. You are God's favorite. You that are saved today, we are all God's favorite. Can you say amen? Somebody shout, I'm God's favorite. What are you believing God to do before the close of this year? What are you expecting to experience in your family, in your finances, in your faith, in your relationship? What are you expecting? Talk to me today. What are you believing for in your life? There are people here today that are bound by crack addiction, cocaine. God is going to set you free in the month of December. If you believe it, I need everybody that believes with me and will join with me in faith to shout aloud hallelujah right now. 
there are people here that are bound by prescription pills. You will be set free by the power of the Holy Ghost today. And you will no longer have a desire to take those things again. Somebody shout aloud, hallelujah, right now. Right now, lift your hands, I declare, a thousand times more favor upon everyone that is hearing me now and will receive it by faith. Jump up and celebrate now. I just declared a thousand times more favor. A thousand times more favor. A thousand times more favor. We're coming into a season now. I believe there's something significant about this season. I believe this is a Cairo season. A Cairo season means a setup. A Kairos moment is when your God's destiny, your destiny connects with God's sovereignty and his plan is released into your life. A Kairos time, a Kairos moment, a Kairos season. You need to declare favor over your life in this season. Stop speaking down to your children. Speak blessing over their life. Stop speaking sickness over your house and speak health over your house. Stop speaking and talking about people. You're destroying your own harvest. Especially when you talk about those that are in prominent places of authority. I don't care if it's on your job, you shouldn't do it. In church, you shouldn't do it. In the kingdom, you should not speak against those that are in authority. But rather, we're told by God to pray for those that are in authority. Can you say amen? amen. I believe right now we are entering into a season when everything is going to work in your favor. Everything. Everything that worked against you is about to turn around and start working for you. Clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Tell somebody it's working in my favor. Somebody's going back to court in the next seven days. It's going to work in your favor. Some of you signed up for something and the Lord says get ready. I'm about to give you a yes where there's been a no. Somebody has filed an application. I feel the Holy Ghost now. This is the Lord speaking to you personally. You filed for an application where there once was a denial. There's going to be a yes and an acceptance. Somebody clap your hands and shout hallelujah. For those of you that are paying bills and you cannot afford to pay your bills, God is either going to provide you the money supernaturally or he's going to supernaturally cancel your debt. Somebody shout aloud hallelujah. God is going to put money in your hands from an unexpected source. I'm here to tell you, get ready. Somebody's about to buy a house. Somebody's about to get a piece of property. Property. Somebody's about to start a new business. Somebody's been working for somebody and people are about to work for you. I'm talking about favor. I feel this in my bones. Tell somebody, get ready. It's about to happen. What you've been praying for is about to happen. What you've been believing for, it's about to happen. Somebody jump up and shout, it's about to happen. God's favor will change your life. Favor is a gift from God. How many of you know Jesus is the greatest gift? Yes. You, read, you study favor? Favor is a gift. Everybody say, thank God for the gift of favor. Favor is activated by obedience to an instruction from God. Favor can make you famous in 24 hours. Favor can accelerate the timetable of your assignment. One moment of God's favor is worth more than a lifetime of your labor. Favor is more valuable than money. Stop asking God for money. Start believing for greater favor. Lift your hands. I declare favor over everyone's finances that is here and watching online. Favor in finance. If you are not a good steward, put your hands down for a moment. If you're not a good steward, don't ask God to bless you with more when you've not been faithful with less. I know a lot of people, they're way over their heads, financial mess, because they're not a good steward of the money that God has put in their hands. If every time you get money, you spend it on yourself, you're not a good steward of finance. It got quiet in here. 
Stay with me. We've got a couple of more weeks. We'll sing Silent Night, but not this morning. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Favor is a gift from God. I've seen many people over the years lose it. When you don't recognize it, celebrate, celebrate it, and appreciate it, you can lose it. I've seen people in ministry lose it because they took it for granted. They did not honor God with the blessing, so they lost it. Saul lost it. Are you listening to me? Because he intentionally, deliberately disobeyed an instruction from a man of God. You don't think you're going to prosper, do you? When you intentionally, deliberately disobey a word from God, you don't think God's going to bless you when you intentionally, daily, deliberately disobey an instruction from God? How many of you consider this your church? Can I see your hand? How many of you consider me your pastor? When I give you an instruction, I expect you to obey it. If not, I'm not your pastor. When a man of God gives you an instruction. See, when you obey God, he blesses you. When your children obey you, you bless them. Somebody talk to me. Somebody shout hallelujah. God speaks to you through my voice. This is why you're here today. I'm preaching. I'm speaking the word of God. What God has put in my heart, I preach it to you. What God has spoken to me in private, I declare to you in public. Somebody say amen. That's why we're all here today. And when you're really excited about the word of God, you're here early, not late. When your life is changing, you don't show up intentionally late. You show up intentionally early. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. God blesses you. This is what I've learned. When you respond to a man or a woman of God's voice and instruction, God will respond to your voice. Are you listening to me? Somebody shout favor is a gift from God. Somebody clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Now let me say this because there's been a great misconception in the body of Christ. Favor does not guarantee freedom from problems. Favor does not guarantee freedom from problems. Daniel was favored of God. Was Daniel problem free? Rachel, the Bible says, was favored of God. She was well favored. Everybody say well favored. Joseph was favored of God. Was he void of problems? No. Well, I heard this faith preacher say this and that faith preacher say this. Well, it's not in the Bible. Jesus himself. I'll take Jesus' word over your word, Jack. He said, in this world, there's going to be trouble. There's going to be problems. There's going to be affliction. There's going to be tribulation. John 16, But be of good cheer. I've already overcome the world for you. I'm giving you the balance today because some of you come from churches that ignore trouble and call it faith. Faith does not ignore reality or trouble. Faith with the word fights back and declares, in spite of my trouble, I'm going to live and walk and experience the favor of heaven Pharaoh the Bible says made Joseph prime minister of an entire country second in authority only to him it was favor that catapulted Joseph from the pit to the palace Joseph experienced the pit and the prison to get to the palace. I got some friends that watch me every week. I love you. But it's really not doctrinally correct what you preach. Theologically. Tell people when you're saved you'll never have any more trouble. You're preparing people for disappointment when you tell them that. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. 
but God shall Psalm 34 19 deliver us out of them all can somebody shout aloud hallelujah what are you doing today pastor I'm preparing the people that God has entrusted me with on earth for the rest of their lives because this is not a problem free life but even in the midst of problems we have joy and we are encouraged and we have strength because we know that God is able to take what the enemy meant for evil and turn it around like Joseph. Shout somebody, it's turning around. Oh, I don't know what you're going through today, but I came to tell you it's turning around. It's turning around in your family. It's turning around in your finances. It's turning around on your job. It's turning around in your marriage. It's turning around now shout just like Joseph God can use stumbling blocks as stepping stones to accomplish his will in your life it's your obedience to God that brings his favor Favors more than finances. Favor is more than money. What good is money if you have no peace? How many people do we know? How many people do we know, Rick, Pat? How many people do we know, Noel, that have money but have no peace? have no peace. My father used to say it all the time, you could buy a million dollar mattress, but it does not guarantee you a good night's sleep. You, you want to experience peace? You need Jesus in your life. You want to have strength in the storm? You need to exit, invite Jesus into your ship. Shout amen, somebody. It's your obedience to God that activates his favor. And your faithfulness to him in difficult times. Anybody can serve God when they feel like it. Anybody can serve God in times of convenience. That's where half this, this church is divided into. Some of you only come to church when it's convenient. But God's looking for people that have great faith. Say, so I don't care what I've gone through this week. I'm making my way to the house of God because I know if I could just get to the house of God, I'll receive a word from God that will strengthen my spirit. And I know that I will leave that place the same way I came. In Jesus' mighty name, can somebody shout hallelujah right now? You've got to learn how to be faithful to God in difficult times. The Bible says in Genesis 6, 8, that Noah, everybody say Noah. Noah. Everybody say Noah found favor in the eyes of God. How about you? Have you found favor in the eyes of God? The Bible says Noah found favor in the eyes of God. How do, how do, how do I find favor? Obedience. Everybody say obedience. Everybody say obedience. By obedience you find favor. By faithfulness you experience favor. How does that happen? It begins by surrendering your entire life to Christ. Everybody say my entire life. You got to open every door. In your house to God. Stop keeping doors closed. God, you can, you can speak to me in this area, but really, I really don't want you to speak to me concerning this. When you obey God, he'll bless you. Very simple. It's not a complicated gospel. It's a simplistic gospel. When you obey God, he blesses you. Tell somebody, when you obey God, 
he'll bless you. Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. In Psalm 84, 11, it says, no good thing does God withhold from them that walk uprightly. Are you here? Are you with me today? No good thing. No good thing. No good thing. No good thing will God withhold from you. Who's he talking to? His people. His child. His favorites. Somebody shout amen. amen. God's favor is not limited to the spiritual realm. I'll be the first one to tell you that. It also extends to the physical realm and the material realm as well. In Noah's life, it translated into ingenious inventions. Somebody shout ingenious inventions. He didn't just build the first boat. He didn't just pioneer the first shipbuilding industry. He also held a wide variety of patents. According to Jewish tradition, it says that Noah invented the plow. Are you listening to me? He also invented the hoe. The hoe's not a person, it's an instrument. Are you here? Got your attention now? He also invented a number of other of implements used for cultivating the ground. The favor of God translates into good ideas. See, hear me today. It doesn't matter what you do in life, what your business is, what your skill set is, what your interest is. When you've got the favor of God, God will empower you and enable you to accomplish the things you desire to do. He's just looking for somebody that will give him the glory and that will give him the credit and that will give him the praise for that which he... God will favor you. He'll favor your business plan. He'll favor your manuscript. He'll favor your career. He'll favor your family. Somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. But you've got to get into the position to experience the favor by acting in obedience. God wants to know how many of you are going to give him the glory when he blesses you. How many of you will bless him right now in advance for the way he's going to favor you in the month of December? Can somebody shout as loud as you can in this place? God is going to bless you. He's going to get the glory. He's going to bless you beyond your ability and beyond your current resources. Somebody shout hallelujah. Noah found favor in the eyes of God. How many of you receive in this word? Favor in your finance? Favor in your family? Favor concerning your faith? Favor in your home? Everything you set your hand to is going to experience the favor of God like never before. The Bible says... Noah, Genesis 6, Put this on the screen of the NIV. I'm almost done. Noah did everything just as God commanded him. Just as God commanded him. Noah did everything that God called him to do. Now watch this. Noah's ark measured 300 cubits. In length, 50 cubits in width, 30 cubits in height. A cubit is equivalent to 17 inches. That means the arc was the length of one and a half football fields. The internal volume of the arc was 1,518,750 cubic feet. The equivalent of 569 train boxcars. 
if the average animal was the size of sheep, the boat, the ark, had the capacity for 125,000 animals. Let's put that into perspective. Stay with me today. Don't be easily distracted. To put that into perspective, there are 2,000 animals from 400 different species at the National Zoo in D.C., Washington, D.C. That means you could fit 60 national zoos on the board, on board of Noah's Ark. And since it was the first boat ever built, and it's not like it came with an instruction manual, it was back breaking work that required blood, sweat, and tears. It took an incredible amount of faith to build the ark. Who builds an ark in the desert? Who hammers away and builds for 120 years on something that might, they not, might not even need? Who banks their entire future on something that has never happened before? According to Jewish tradition, Noah didn't just start building the ark. He first planted the trees first. After they were grown, he cut the trees down, sowed, sawed them into planks, and built the ark. And here's an interesting piece of information. Not until the late 19th century did a ship that size get constructed again. Yet that design ratio is still considered the golden standard for stability during storms at sea. Noah's act of obedience, it literally changed the world. Your act of obedience will change your world. Somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. So it's time for you to go and do what God has called you to do. It's stop wasting your life. Stop allowing weeks and months to pass you by. It's time for you to do what God has called you to do. Somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. If you're always expecting everyone to support Support and approval, you'll never do what God has called you to do. But when you got the favor of God and you begin to put feet to what God's put in your heart, His favor will be upon you and you will always be unstoppable. How many of you want this kind of favor? Start by obeying God today. Always waiting for somebody to encourage you. Always looking for people to support you, to be there for you. I want to help you. You'll never do what God has called you to do when you're always waiting for somebody to support you. grow up. Life's not fair. Pastor, why don't they love me? Why don't they talk to me? Why don't they support me? Grow up. There's someone that will always be there. My father told me years ago, he said, you'll find this out to be true. At the end of your life, if you can count on one hand, those you can really count on, you've done well. That's why people leave churches. People didn't encourage them to talk about my business. See, the problem is most of your friends are fake. They're fraudulent and they're absolutely phony. You want to find a real friend? He'll be there for you through the hardest times of your life. They'll speak an encouraging word when they themselves are discouraged. When you find somebody like that, wrap your arms around them and never let them go. It's time. We make up our mind that we want God's will 
Some of you, I've seen you, I know you 35, 40 years, you've wasted 20, 30 years. Always looking for somebody else to help you. God is responsible for your life. God is the one that will uphold you in your time of devastation and affliction. God is the one that will give you the strength in the hour of adversity. He said, I'll be your refuge. I'll be your strength. I'll be your very present help in a time of trouble. God is the only one that can bring you through loss. God is the only one that can give you a song when you don't have another song to sing. God is the only one that can cause you to keep going forward when life is constantly knocking you back. Somebody get on your feet and praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Noah found favor. I'm done. In the eyes of God. You need a miracle stand. If you hesitate, don't stand because you're not serious. You need a miracle. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Yes, yes, yes. Lift your hands. You need a miracle. Favor comes by obedience. Bless the righteous with his favor. Lift your hands all over the house. Those online. I come into agreement now. I come into agreement with everyone within the sound of my voice. I received a report today, somebody that's been in the hospital that they thought they were going to die is being discharged. Who's next? Who's ready for a real miracle from God? You have your hands raised, you're standing, come and stand at the front quickly. need a miracle, come. need a miracle, come, 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 come. One prayer is going to take care of all of it. One prayer of faith. But this is not a day to walk out of church. People really need our faith. Lift your hands and praise Him. Praise him now. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Lift your hands. In Jesus' name. We come by faith. We come by faith. I've declared that this is a month of extraordinary, unusual, unstoppable, amazing favor. I declare now favor in your health, favor in your relationships, favor in your family, favor upon your children. One simple act of faith can change your life forever. Lift those hands to heaven and close your eyes and focus on nothing but God. Focus on nothing but God. Favor. The Lord said favor, favor. I'm favoring them. I'm favoring them in December. Like never before. Like never before. Bigger, better, greater. Like never before. Like never before. Someone said, Pastor, why am I bound by addiction? Because you want it. 
You got to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. You got to come to the end of yourself. When you come to the end of yourself, that's when you discover God's plan for your life. Lift your hands all over this room and receive what you're believing for by faith. Receive it now by the Holy Ghost. As you respond to the anointing of God, there is a burden lifting, yoke destroying anointing here today. Some of you need to get ready, you need to pack your bags, you need to go buy some boxes, you need to get some packing peanuts, some bubble wrap, and reserve a truck, because God's getting ready to move you closer to this church. God's about to bless you with the best place you've ever had so that you could do more for him and bless other people in that house. God's about to expand your territory. God's about to enlarge your borders because you've outgrown where you are. I'm talking prophetically right now. You're about to break out on the left and you're about to break out on the right. God's about to enlarge your borders and stretch out your habitation. Lift your hands right now. I speak healing now over your heart. Healing now over a troubled mind. Healing now over those that are dealing with affliction in your health. Infirmity. Every form of infirmity. Every form of malfunction. I break it now in the name of Jesus. And as you lift your hands, I command your blood. I command your organ function to improve dramatically now every physical attack demonic attack infirmity spirits of infirmity in sickness spirits of infirmity in sickness I command it get off of you now get off get off get out of my body leave now leave now speak to it speak to it speak to it now whatever it is whatever it is speak to it use your authority now open your mouth and speak to it in Jesus name sickness you cannot stay fear you cannot stay anxiety you cannot stay cancer you cannot stay depression you cannot stay get off of me now I command you by the authority of Jesus and by the authority of the Word of God if you're dealing with habits and addiction you need to command it today it leaves me I repent of it I refuse to be bound by it another day I will not live in these chains I will not live in this darkness anymore today I'm coming out 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 of this I will not be an addict the rest of my life I I claim my freedom now. I claim my healing now. I declare my breakthrough now in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Now lift your hands and flood the heavenlies with your shout of praise.